so hello guys welcome back to our youtube channel guys today in this video we will be covering a topic of distillation which is azeotropic distillation guys in this video we will be looking at what is azeotropic distillation then we will also look at what is azeotropes how azeotropes are formed types of azeotrope also we will be covering the purpose methodology of azeotropic distillation guys we will also cover the construction of azeotropic distillation the working of azeotropic distillation followed by we will be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of azeotropic distillation and at the end we will be looking at the application of azeotropic distillation okay guys so now let's get started with azeotropic distillation guys azeotropic distillation is a specific technique or specific type of distillation process which is used to separate mixtures of liquid that forms an azeotrope okay now you might be thinking what is an azeotrope so guys an azeotrope is a mixture of two or more components that exhibits unique properties such as having a constant boiling point composition in other words in the case of azeotropic distillation during the distillation process the vapor and liquid phase have the same composition and which makes it challenging to separate the components by normal traditional distillation methods so to separate such kind of mixtures or such kind of azeotropes we need to have a azeotropic distillation guys now we will be looking at how the azeotropes form so guys the azeotrope are formed when the vapor pressure of a mixture matches to that of individual components and guys there are two type of azeotropes one is minimum boiling azeotrope and other is maximum boiling azeotrope now you might be thinking that what is minimum boiling azeotrope and what is maximum boiling azeotrope right so guys in a minimum boiling azeotrope the mixture boils at a temperature lower than the boiling points of individual components for example include the ethanol water azeotrope which has a boiling point of around 78.2 degrees celsius this 78.2 degrees celsius boiling point is of mixture of ethanol and water here minimum boiling azeotrope means uh, we have a mixture of water and ethanol right the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius and the boiling point of ethanol is 78.4 degrees celsius but the azeotropic mixture of both ethanol and water has boiling point of 78.2 degrees celsius which is less compared to individual boiling points of ethanol and water so it is known as minimum boiling azeotrope i hope it is clear to you now looking at the maximum boiling azeotrope in maximum boiling azeotrope the mixture boils at a temperature higher than that of a boiling point of its individual components and the example of it is hydrochloric acid water azeotrope okay guys so this was a brief about azeotropes okay now guys continuing in this video we will be looking at some important points which is related to azeotropic distillation from which the first is the purpose you might be thinking that what is the purpose of azeotropic distillation so guys azeotropic distillation is employed to break or modify the azeotropes and separate the components of a mixture with similar boiling points okay then the second point is of methodology talking about azeotropic distillation a third component called an entrainer or azeotrope breaking agent is often introduced into the system the entrainer forms a temporary azeotrope with one of the components altering the overall behavior of the mixture so this is a methodology of azeotropic distillation okay guys you might be thinking that how are entrainer chosen right so guys entrainer are carefully chosen based on their ability to form a azeotrope with one of the component and their ease of separation from the desired product okay some of the common entrainer includes benzene toluene xylene and many more okay now talking about distillation column so azeotropic distillation is conducted in a distillation column which may consist of several trays or packing means it can be type of both which is tray tray column distillation or packed column distillation and guys the mixture is heated and vapor rises through the column while the liquid flows down which is a typically working of distillation column here the major difference between the simple distillation and azeotropic distillation is the addition of an entrainer okay guys and 
talking about separation the entrainer which is used to separate the components with same boiling point comes into place the entrainer interacts with one of the component forming a new azeotrope with a different composition and the desired component can then be separated from the entrainer more easily in subsequent distillation steps and at the end comes the recovery of entrainer the entrainer is usually recovered and recycled to minimize the cost so guys these were few of the points which i thought need to be discussed with you related to azeotropic distillation now guys moving on in this video we'll be looking at the construction of azeotropic distillation so guys the first component for the assembly of azeotropic distillation is steel guys this is where the liquid mixture is initially heated to create vapor the heat input causes the more volatile component of the mixture to vaporize the reboiler is a crucial component as it initiates the separation process okay guys the second component comes the distillation column which is the heart of the system distillation column is responsible for actual separation of the components it consists of a vertical column which is generally a pack column or a tray column guys as the vapor rises through the column it comes in contact with the liquid descending from the trays or the packing and this intimate contact allows for the mass transfer and separation of the component based on the difference between the boiling points okay guys then next comes a important equipment which is condenser once the vapor reaches to the top of the column it is to be condensed back into the liquid form by the help of condenser this phase change is critical for collecting the separated components guys then the next component is a receiver or separating unit the condensed liquid is then collected into the receiver where the individual components are separated based on the different physical properties such as boiling points so guys in simple words the construction of azeotropic distillation comprises of four main components which is the steel or a reboiler then the distillation column then condenser and at last is the receiver or the separation unit i hope the construction of azeotropic distillation is clear to you if there arises any question in your mind do let me know in the comment section okay guys now moving on in this video with the working of azeotropic distillation so the typical steps involved in the working of azeotropic distillation includes or starts with the mixture preparation guys the azeotropic mixture is prepared by mixing the component in the desired ratio after which comes the step of introduction of entrainer or solvent so guys the entrainer or solvent is introduced into the mixture followed by the entrainer introduction comes the distillation part where the mixture is heated in a distillation column and as the temperature increases the component starts to vaporize and the added component reacts with one of the mixture of the component to form a new azeotrope with a different composition which is a step of formation of new azeotrope after the formation of new azeotrope comes the separation part the new azeotrope is then condensed and condensed liquid is collected in a separate container means the liquid which is to be purified or which is to be separated is collected in a container and the other liquid which is newly formed a mixture of new azeotrope is collected into the other container okay guys and now comes the recovery of entrainer or solvent so guys the entrainer or solvent is typically recovered or reused for the purpose of cost saving guys let me brief it out the azeotropic distillation works by exploiting the differences in the boiling point of the component in the liquid mixture the mixture is heated in the steel and the vapor rises to the column as the vapor moves up the column it comes in contact with the descending liquid the component with higher boiling point tends to condense and return to the liquid phase while those with lower boiling point continue to rise okay the goal is to break the azeotropic composition by adjusting the condition in the column such as temperature pressure or by addition of entrainer which is a third component that modifies the azeotropic composition and by doing so it becomes possible to separate the components effectively so guys this was a simple working of azeotropic distillation okay now next 
we'll be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of azeotropic distillation. Firstly, looking at the advantages of azeotropic distillation, the first advantage is of effective separation. Guys, azeotropic distillation is effective in separating components with similar boiling point, which would be challenging while using the traditional distillation methods. Then the next advantage is of purity. Guys, azeotropic distillation allows for the production of high purity components by breaking the azeotropes and isolating the individual substances. Okay, the third advantage is of versatility. Guys, azeotropic distillation can be applied to various industries including chemical, pharmaceutical and petrochemical making it versatile separation technique. Next, the next advantage is of recycling of entrainer. The entrainers used in the process can often be recovered or recycled reducing the operational cost. Okay, now the fifth advantage of azeotropic distillation is the customization. Guys, the choice of entrainer allows for customization of the process to suit specific separation requirement. Okay, and the last advantage is related to energy efficiency. Guys, in some cases, azeotropic distillation may be more energy efficient compared to the other separation methods due to the reduced temperature requirements. So guys, these were few advantages of azeotropic distillation. Now comes the disadvantages of azeotropic distillation. The first disadvantage is of complexity. Azeotropic distillation process can be complex requiring careful designing and optimization. The selection of entrainer and the control of the process parameter can be challenging. Okay. Then the next disadvantage is of corrosion and material compatibility. Guys, the use of entrainer or the presence of corrosive component in the mixture may lead to corrosion and compatibility issues, which is with the material used in the distillation equipment. So this can be a major disadvantage, right? Then the next disadvantage is of environmental impact. Some of the entrainer used in azeotropic distillation process may be hazardous or not friendly to the environment and which requires careful handling and disposal. Okay. The fourth disadvantage is of cost. Azeotropic distillation may involve additional cost associated with the purchase, handling and recovery of entrainers which makes it economically less favorable in some cases. Okay, now the next disadvantage is of energy intensive. While talking about azeotropic distillation, it can be energy efficient in some scenarios. It may also be energy intensive depending on the specific separation requirement and the need of high temperatures. So that is why in some cases, the process of azeotropic distillation is energy intensive. Then one more disadvantage is of limited applicability. Guys, azeotropic distillation is not suitable for all mixtures and its effectiveness depends on the nature of the components involved. Right? And at the end, the last disadvantage is of potential for product losses. During the separation process, there is a high risk of losing some of the product in the entrainer, especially if the azeotropic mixture is not well designed or its separation efficiency is not optimized. So during that time, we, there is a high potential for product losses. Okay guys, so these were some of the advantages and disadvantages of azeotropic distillation. Now finally, at the end of this video, we'll be looking at the application of azeotropic distillation. So guys, particularly for this video, we'll be covering the four main applications of azeotropic distillation, which is chemical industry, pharmaceutical, petrochemical, food and beverage industries. Guys, the azeotropic distillation finds widespread use in chemical industries for separating and purifying various components particularly various chemical components. Then in pharmaceutical, the technique is employed for purification of drugs and other critical compounds ensuring high level of purity. Okay? Then talking about petrochemical, 
The azeotropic distillation is crucial in petrochemical industry for refining crude oil and separating different petrochemical products. And last application which we discussed was of food and beverage industries where it plays a role in the production of beverages and food flavoring ensuring the separation and purification of specific components. Okay guys, so this was a brief video on azeotropic distillation. To summarize this video, azeotropic distillation is a powerful technique for separation of components that form azeotrope. And it offers an advantage in terms of effective separation and high purity. But it also comes with complexity and potential challenges. And its applications are diverse spanning across industries where precise separation of component is crucial. Ok guys, so this was a brief about azeotropic distillation. And guys that's all for this video where we discussed about azeotropic distillation. Guys I hope you like this video and thank you for watching. And guys for more video related to chemical engineering, process engineering, chemical safety, industrial safety. You can subscribe to this channel and guys feel free to leave any questions or comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in next video.